the midst of this episode, we had a new member to join the Waystone. I'd like to give a warm welcome to Duo. He's from Existence, if you're familiar with them. And he's a fantastic content creator. So welcome to the family, man. Hope you have a good time on the server while you're here. And we'll be seeing you around. He's the crazy cow. That's kind of just... Is that, was that the wrong thing to say? Anyways, link's down in the description. Hello, I'm Ufflesick, and welcome back to The Waystone, Season 3, Episode 17, and we're back. After about a week or so, we decided to jump back into Minecraft. Yes, miss the recording, miss the projects, and also the audience most of all. So it's good to see you guys again. And not only that, but I wanted to say a huge thank you for the people who had wished me a happy birthday. It was fantastic. It was great. So there's actually a lot of people that came over to the update video, and it's like, Waffle, hope you have a good birthday. Hope everything goes fine for you. So I do appreciate it. It was fantastic. I got to play some other games and not only that, but discovered some other streamers went out for dinner and also got some presents. You know how it goes. Your mainstream birthday, I guess you could call it. So today we're back in the world of Minecraft and it feels good. And I wanted to work on a project over here in the witch hut area because I was looking at this mountainside and a recommendation was given to me. By Pickle MC, you may remember him. Yes, he was a previous member on the Waystone. He's a fantastic builder, and he had a fantastic idea of doing a witch's cove. I thought this would be really cool to do in the mountainside, so we have water access, and we could do some cool magical cavern system. Now, after looking at this for a minute, I have decided that I want a huge entrance, and that's going to take a little bit of work. We'll get there. I'm just going to go over and get my beacon over at base. And we should be good to go on that. I think I have all the iron I need. I have all the stuff from last time I was here. Get a bunch of building materials. It's nice to have on the side, you know. Just leave my stuff here. Oh, this looks good. This looks really good. I think that'll do. And we may want to get some additional materials over a base. So I'm just going to fly over there and we'll get started. Oh, and I totally forgot. we done a bunch of organization off camera. I have went through my work area trying to declutter it so that we can move it to the base area. We do have a few things in here. See what we've got. We've got a redstone choker box and a bunch of quartz and wool, which could be really useful and a bunch of different things. This looks nice. I'm glad I finally bit the bullet and done it. Of course, there's some stragglers. We'll have to get those later. And some empty choker boxes. Nice to have those two organized, and I got a bunch of inn stuff in here. I'm gonna put in all of my valuables. I actually went to the inn cities just to see what I could find. Found some pretty good shovels, and you know, got four elytras from that excursion. So not half bad. And the diamonds, those will have to be spent sometime soon because I'm tired of going into my ender chest and just seeing diamonds. I think we should go over to spawn. We haven't been here in about six days, so I'm pretty curious. See if I've made anything at the iron shop, if my sand shop's done any better, and also the post office box. So we made one diamond at the iron shop, not too bad, but we have nothing in our post office box. But I wanted to take a look around, take the opportunity to look at some of the builds that spawn from my perspective, because you probably don't see them much from my point of view. And I really wanted to show some of them off. A lot of them were in spoiler state, so you couldn't really spoil them. But they're at the point now where I think I could commentate on them a bit. We have the Nerdians Cathedral. This is a beautiful piece. You may have seen it a few times in some of my clips. It has a nice dome going on back there. I think Llama Freak had worked on that specifically and had also helped build the rest of it in the Nerdians pitched in all together. And there's this huge structure in this connection of these two islands, as you can see. Just right there, it's the perfect place for it. And there's also a courthouse back here, which I think was a collaboration between Jados and the Nerdians. Oh, this looks good. You could see a lot of Jados' work going on in this. I mean, we have the terrain. I think the terraforming was done by him. It looks very similar to his modern home. But someone told me that it was a small courthouse. I think it looks more like a medium-sized one. I mean, they're not giving themselves enough credit when it comes to the size. This is actually quite big. Or a waystone courthouse because there's not a lot of members on here and i really love how the trees are poking through the windows that looks incredible all the greenery really makes you feel like you're in a jungle and some of these house builds done by indecisive nerd he has done an incredible job of representing a different style in the building creativity that looks great some of the wings coming up to the top kind of reminds me of minecraft a bit just a bit 
A nice little wheat field going on back there. Man, there's some incredible builds around. You just got to look for them. Jado says Modern House is complete, which looks really cool. I just wanted to show you his little cave he's got under here that you can drive into with a boat. It's impressive. Like, it's just very creative and it's original, I guess you could say. I don't really think of these things when I'm building. Wow. And maybe we can gather some inspiration from this for our Witch's Cove. You know, do something inside of it got all of his mob heads down here good collection area nice gonna fly out of here I'm trying to think if there's anything else oh also the bridge and also the me tower I want to take a look at this one this is incredible like it's insane how big this thing is it only took him I think a short amount of time to do it the me tower now this will be coming up in my future episodes we're gonna be doing something with this oh this is <laughs> it's insane how big it is that's crazy you want to feel like a rich high roller, you just come here. But without much matter, let's get back to our base area, I guess. Start collecting some materials to build with. And we'll head over to the swamp. I was going to do it earlier, but I got distracted. After a little bit of gandering around, I have made an extreme rough draft of how this is going to operate. So we have the entrance of the cavern system here. I've noticed this indention in the mountainside, which would be perfect for doing the cavern system because it would naturally look like it's going into the mountain itself. And we could do like a crack or a crook, just kind of coming into the cavern entrance and then opening it up into a big cavern entrance. That would be really cool. Something different. And I've been still debating on using leaves because this is in the extreme hills biome. And I don't think the swamp's going to affect that. So the leaves are going to be bright green instead of this kind of dismal color. So we may have to go with some birch leaves. And I couldn't find any blocks that was well suited for this build over at my base. So I want to keep it a little bit more natural. I've got my beacon with me. I think we're going to do a time lapse for us carving this bad boy out. Because it's going to take a little bit of time. I don't want to go too deep with the cavern system. But just a little bit. So it gives it a little bit more of a mystic vibe. Ah, oh, yeah. Just look at that sunset. We've got a haste to beacon. We've got extra tools and extra storage. But the cavern process has begun. As you can see, it's starting to look pretty good, actually you swam out here a bit you could see it more in a uniform fashion that looks really good compared to why I was thinking it was going to look we just got to crook that a bit more and I was originally going to do a time lapse on this but since this is so fast I thought to just save that for a decoration time and it looks like this may be running into a separate cavern system I think I had lit this for the witch farm yeah, that's fine. I want to keep it kind of spooky, maybe a little bit dark in here, and then have a lighting at the ends like it has now. And to maybe some kind of witch residence, some type of residence back here in this cavern system. Not absolutely sure. I think Pickle MC had left some recommendations about what to put into it. So I want to check those out and see what I can work with. Hey, it's coming along. So let's just do some updates. We'll get to decor and hopefully get this thing finished. I think we've pulled it off. That looks pretty cool. And I gotta say, it's a little bit atmospheric coming in this midsection because it's quite dark. But I am foreseeing some challenges with the color palette because it's extremely gray, extremely bland, and I gotta mystify that up a bit and keep it natural at the same time. And I think this cavern system's pushed back enough where it looks good, especially if we were to flow it out here and just see it from a distance a bit. Oh yes, that looks cool. And you can kind of see a hint of something back there. And we're gonna push a residence into that wall. I'm not necessarily gonna be doing a house in here. Cause I just feel like it's a little bit unnecessary with the design and we have the cavern system to work for us. Yes, definitely a plus on that. Just gotta fill this up with water, begin the decorations and then do some type of residence to polish off the product. Don't judge me, I'm using some of my standard techniques to transform this cave and I think it looks a lot better whenever we have some green in here and started situating it with some of these natural colors and it looks more natural. Not only that, but we've introduced some alienation with the window panes. Looks really nice in contrast with the different colors and it makes it look a little bit spookier in these darker areas but once you, you, know, you light it up, you notice, well, it doesn't look so bad. But the great thing about this is it makes it more subtle, even though it's more noticeable from outside the leaves. Back there, it looks quite subtle. You don't know what's going on until you approach the cave. And then you start looking at the window panes it's like, oh, there's something mysterious going on here. You go inside and it's somewhat cozy. 
I don't want to make it too scary or atmospheric. Just that point there I think works well. We've got something going on here with the conjure, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I think I might keep it, may not. And so I've saved a lot of the time to work on the residential area, which is going to be fun. And it's going to be a challenge to kind of network into something that's minimal, but at the same time introduces, you know, like a nice AFK area or somewhere to come to when once we're in this vicinity. This looks slightly atmospheric, but we're slowly transitioning into a much more cozy environment. And that's ultimately what I wanted to go for. I wanted mystery, not necessarily spooky, but a bit of a mystery. And I think for residential living in the cavern system, integrating the cave designs in here really worked well. We've got a fireplace in the corner to warm things up. And I'm trying to mess with some different blocks to make it look nice. And so I brought in some dark oak which I think looks pretty cool. I've still got to mess with it a bit and get it right, tweak it, you know. I think that's spruce. I was wanting to look at that and see how well that goes with dark oak. I've never really tried that combination. That's not bad, actually. We may have to get some more of that to speckled in here because I didn't want to do this all the way through the residential area. It's more of a foundation pattern to break up the wall once we place things on it. And maybe even introducing some different shapes into the top would be nice. So we could go for some cobblestone stairs. We can go for some stone brick stairs as well. I've got some stone brick in there. Got a bunch of stone and you'd probably put away. Let's try out some of these stone brick stairs and see how those look. I'm just going to get a few of them to get an idea. So placing it in sort of random locations like this. Maybe a little bit of a cubby hole there. So it's kind of like a round shape but not necessarily a full round shape. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I think maybe some slabs would do as well. I don't want it to be extremely noticeable. So let's just put in maybe a couple of stairs in the pits. There we go, nice, good fit. And now let's just grab some slabs and then possibly put something on the bottom of these. And I don't know how that's gonna look. We could try it. Never hurts, so maybe just some regular stone. I don't want it to stand out too much. But with andesite, that might actually look pretty cool. Gives it more of a modern vibe. Oddly enough, I didn't expect that at all. Yeah, that would work. It's just a very different looking style. I uh, might have to work with that, tweak it to its fullest, and I've actually taken advice from the Crafty Scott to do variations in level inside of your residence, which I think looks really nice. Uh, more of the spruce to come, definitely, and then we've got to do some paintings, but I've got a bunch of wool on me. Went back over to base, picked up some wool for some carpet, because carpets are fun, carpet pieces. I don't know if I want to do multiple colors in here because that looks like Christmas. Oh boy, this is a challenge. I flew all the way here, gathered a bunch of items to take it back to build with, and had totally forgot to get a brewing stand. And I don't know if I have one or not. Been looking around a bit, but can you seem to find one? I thought I would gather a couple of them from the end. Maybe not. We might have to just manually craft one. That's really strange. They're usually laying about somewhere because the end cities have numerous amounts of them. Let's see what we've got here. I haven't crafted one in so long. I can't even remember. Let's see, a brewing, there we go, brewing stand. Oh, that's really cheap. Never mind. I thought it was going to be more expensive. So I think I seen some blaze rods in one of these chests. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab that. And I think, yeah, I've got some cobblestone in my inventory. I don't know if we're going to need two of them. I think one will do. That's fine. So let's go ahead and put our blaze rod there. And now. We have ourselves a brewing stand. I don't know if there's anything else that would look really cool in that build or not. Just looking around. Not seeing much in here though. There's a bunch of junk. Hey look, a diamond hoe. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I don't think I have anything that would fit more than what I have over there. I brought some bookshelves over to that area and not only that, but we brought some cobwebs. Oh look, the iron farm is functioning. That's always nice to see. So once again, I'm going to make the trip. Uh, this takes about 10 or 12 rockets to get over here in their duration three. Introducing some green into the area. You think it looks really nice, kind of an abandoned feel, but it still makes it feel livable. And these vines really work in here to help remain consistent from the outside. 
And I just want to implement maybe a few more of these blocks because I really like how the grass blocks have turned out. I think maybe just doing a couple more like this is really good. And then we can also put in some bone mill like right there. Maybe put this in the corner so it looks like it's growing up against the column itself. Hmm. I like it. It's different. It's, it's much different and a nice vibe to it. Really wanted to clutter in this area and it has come a long way since we first started it. Now, I think to finish off the project, we need to do a little bit more out here, maybe do some column work. And then we've got to work on the front of the cave because that's where the major issue is. It looks very bland right there. I think it could use for some clutter, some cobblestone, some different textures. Support beams, vines, and leaves really go a long ways when working with the entrance of the cave. And the only problem I'm seeing is you don't notice the crook as much from up there. But I wonder if you swim backwards you would notice it. Yes, there's a noticeable thing there. I need to get some more of those jungle leaves and have them coming out of that crook. But aside from that, it's looking pretty good. And under here, we need to fill this in so it looks more realistic when you're looking from a top. Right there, that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge, but we'll get there at some point. Probably just not this episode. I've got to gather a bunch of materials before I do that. And... Going back to base or spawn one more time is going to drive me crazy. So right here is our next challenge. If we get this done, we'll be done with the project. I would say we just do, you know, a couple of support columns and maybe do a little bit of stair work and make this somewhat like the Hobbit hole we've seen in season two done by Pickle and Gaines. Sounds good to me, but nothing that close. This is the perfect example of me going out of my comfort zone, something totally different than what I normally do. And I officially declare this as my decorative builds area. There's a slime just wandering over there. I totally forgot I was in the swamp. But next time you start up a project, try that. Go out of your comfort zone, try something totally different. And what you learn, man, you can learn a lot of different things. And not only that, but it's self-satisfaction to see it come to life. I mean, this area, doesn't look half bad. It obviously could use some improvements. And I think that's where the comment section comes in handy. People really give me a lot of good improvements and recommendations. But it's not too bad. It looks pretty cool. And especially in here, very cozy AFK area, man. Oh, that's the most exciting part to me. I think maybe I want to try a column there, but that would just totally block that off. Maybe not. Just a sporadic idea. But that is the official Witch's Cove. Thank you, Pickle. I appreciate the recommendation, and man, it turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to. Oh yes, look at those vines. They look very fine, and the more I look at it, the more I fall in love with that cozy and humble atmosphere at the end of that cave. We've got a boat there. I thought I'd try it out. Not much different than walking in, but hey, that is a successful project. I'm really proud of that. And there's so much more to do in this area. We have this whole piece of the island to work with. And we've also got the mountainside to kind of work with little bits up there, maybe more subtle bits. And at some point in the future, we have got to make this into a more pleasing structure. I just don't really like that much. It doesn't look that pretty. That's going to be a challenge because I don't think those are symmetrical on each side. Maybe, may not. And more of these trees to do as well, which looks really nice. But I think that's going to be about it for this episode, guys. Hope you did enjoy watching. I'm going to drown in the lake. You guys have a fantastic day. We'll see you in episode 18.